Hello everyone, Kilo Charlie 2, Sierra Tango Hotel here, taking a moment to show you my latest kit build, that is by Delta Lima 2, Mike Alpha November, and Wells kit here is a USDX multi-band, multi-mode unit based on the Atmega 328 chip. His kit consisted of uh, multiple boards. They call it the sandwich setup. And essentially, you can download his Gerber files and you can send them off to have them printed. Or he does have some relationships with some sellers that are selling his boards here in the U.S. that you can purchase separately. Uh, these boards that I'm showing you here were manufactured by JLC PCB and it took about two weeks to have them manufactured and shipped into the U.S. They're pretty decent quality. Uh, I have not had any problems with them yet. And essentially all the components were purchased from Mauser or DigiParts. And for the most part, everything went well. Uh, everything powered up fine. So I just wanted to show you basically what the boards look like. Yeah, we'll take a little bit of detail here. As you can see, a lot of the components are SMD with a few through-hole components. But for the most part, it was relatively easy to, to assemble all this. Just took my time. You know, I didn't use any hot air rework station or anything. I just used a fine tip iron and uh, went along and, and assembled everything. And you can see one difference that I made compared to some of the other guys. Uh, I made it so that I could replace all the ICs because this is a development kit. This is not a finished product. Uh, it is an active development right now. So if you go on the, the message board that is set up for the group, you can actively download latest firmware and you can see where other people are experimenting with this. So as you can see, it looks like a finished kit, but it's actually in continuous development. Uh, DL2 MAN uh, has made Quite a few improvements over the, the last year. Uh, he has a website set up where you can actually view a lot of his work and he talks about the development process that went into this and who he partnered with to develop the software that runs this. Uh, what I'm showing you right now is his latest design. It is his eight band module. Uh, this band actually does 80, 60, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, and 10 meters. So each one of these components uh, were hand assembled and uh, essentially soldered down to the board. And as you can see, we'll quickly snap everything together here. And we'll take these standoffs and throw them on real quick. I will apologize for the video quality. Uh, I'm trying to do this on the, the cheap. I'm doing it all live in one video clip. So there's not going to be any editing to this video like I've done in some of my scanning videos. So we'll flip the band module over. And this one locks down. And like I was saying, this is an active development, and there are some plans to add an additional board, and that additional board actually will provide you an, an automatic antenna tuner. Um, they have the concept down, but they're working on finishing the development of it right now. So I'm looking forward to getting the Gerber files for the ATU and seeing what we can do with it. Um, there is one limitation to this design. It is a class E type amplifier and you need a perfectly matched antenna or you'll be replacing 
We'll zoom up here a little bit. That little component down there. If you don't have your matched antenna, you're going to smoke it. So, and the last board here that I'm going to put on, this is just an extra board. Um, Delta Lima 2 Mike Alpha November gives you a choice. You can do either an LLED or an LCD. Well, I had the extra board laying around, and just to make it easier to hold on to the sandwich, I just made it a back cover for now. And I put a couple of rubber feet on it. And we'll see if we can't get some screws in here. And then I'll do a real quick power up. I'm not near my coax, so I'm not going to be able to let you listen to what it sounds like. But I do have that in another recording. So you can see where I was able to listen to 40 meters and 80 meters. Um, I have not put this on the air yet, and it's simply because I did not pay attention to this. I got an RP connector instead of a standard uh, SMA connector. So I have to order an adapter, and once the adapter comes in, I will mate it up to, oh, there goes that screw, so we'll leave that off for now. I'll uh, <clears throat> mate it up to my antenna, check to make sure I got a good match, and then we'll try it out on the air. But in the other videos, you can see I did bypass the board, went in on the header, and basically tapped in the first two pins here, and was able to use that for my receive signal. And real quickly, there's no on and off switch on this. It's very simplistic, very minimal parts, which I like about this. Um, it's just a cool little radio. So I have my power supply up. That's what you hear humming in the background. And as soon as you plug it in, it comes on. And we'll bring it up here. And you can see that it's powered up. And then just to change, I just hit the button. And we can go into the menu. And we can change mode, you know, filtering. Band, if I want to change from 20, if you listen closely, you'll actually hear the relays clicking. And it's pre configured that you can do from 6 meters to 160, but uh, because we only can do 8 bands, I had to make a choice of which bands I was going to do. And let's go back to 40. And we'll select that. Um, you do need an amplified speaker if you're going to listen to it on a speaker, or you can plug in headphones. The neat cool thing about this I really like is Manuel put in his own speaker, or I mean, excuse me, his own microphone, so you don't have to have an external mic. Uh, you can hit the push to talk button here and speak right into the element. Or if you wanted a hand mic, you can plug one in here in the same spot you would plug in your key. And then you're pushed to talk up here, and you can activate the radio that way. Um, what else is also unique about this radio is it has cat control. We can actually plug this in using a little TTL converter, and we can interface this with a logging software. Um, don't see that much on a development project, but he did manage to include that. Uh, the other nice thing is, is when you go to do updates, uh, we're using a very inexpensive uh, Uno, at Mega Uno. Um, so I have this set up as my USDX bootloader one. Um, and then we can just connect it up with just a plain couple jumper cables. And we just plug it in and Take the latest firmware and push it to it. Nothing real fancy to that either. Uh, if you're playing with the app megas, you're very familiar with that. If you're new to it, like I am, uh, it's very simple. There's not much to it. Uh, so this is pretty much it, guys. Just wanted to take a few minutes here, show you what we've done. Uh, I got maybe uh, all total 16 hours into building this, and that was just me taking my time getting an hour here an hour there you know it's kind of hard with with the family to peel away that much time but 
you know, I, I chipped away at it over a few weeks and this is what we ended up with. And as you can see, that's a pretty nifty little radio. And uh, I want to thank uh, DL2MAN for his work on this. This is a great project. And everybody else that has supported him in this, this is, this is just awesome, guys. Well, take care, everyone. Kilo Charlie 2, Sierra Tango Hotel, 7-3.